Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video. In this video I'll be talking about a very widely utilized construction material and that is timber. In today's video we'll be looking at the classification of timber, we'll be discussing some of the history of timber and its use by various civilizations and then I'll talk about the types of timber that are available in the market, the uses of timber, uh, we'll talk about the sustainability of timber and then finally we'll discuss some of the defects that are associated with timber. So let's start by looking at what timber is. Timber is a type of wood that is a natural structural material. It is obtained from trees. In the process of wood production, wood is converted into beams and planks and these then are the products that we refer to as timber. Now timber is an economical product, it's strong and in some instances sustainable. Now I say some instances because it depends on the tree cycle. Another point about timber is that it is considered to be a cellular composite material. What that means is that you have various interlocking cells forming a lattice. And this structure is due to the need to transport water from the roots to the top of the tree. You can classify timber based on the tree type from which it is obtained. So we've got two classifications depending on the tree type and that is endogenous trees and exogenous trees. So an endogenous tree is one that grows inwards in a longitudinal fibrous mass. An example of that would be bamboo, palm and cane. Uh, exogenous tree on the other hand, the, these are ones that grow outwards uh, and they can be seen as rings in a cross section. Um, and you can also visualize that in uh, the figures on the slide in front of you. If we look at exogenous trees, they can be further classified into two main types and that is softwood and hardwood. In softwood, the higher permeable layer, known as the sapwood, is larger than in the hardwood. And this is seen in the cross-section uh, figure. So if I take a cross-section of, uh, of the tree and you can see that on the screen in front of you, um, you'll notice that the sapwood is shown as the light colored material uh, so for softwood, that sapwood is, uh, is higher in proportion compared to the hardwood and that's why softwood is lighter and it has a lighter color. So it's lighter in weight and it's lighter in color as well. Um, on the other hand, hardwood uh, is strong and it's also heavy. In terms of the endogenous trees, an example of that would be bamboo. Um, it's a it's used commonly in, in construction, for instance, as a structural supporting system. Uh, and in some cases, uh, they, uh, bamboo is used to build houses, and these houses would be sustainable houses. Now, one important point about timber is the fact that there's this weird characteristic of it when it comes to strength. Um, it's an orthotropic material, and what that means is that it does not behave equally in all directions. So it is strong and stiff parallel to the grain, yet it is weak perpendicular to the grain. So you know this difference creates some sort of uh, a funny behavior such that you need to ensure that the timber that you use is positioned in the right direction for you to achieve the maximum capacity for that material. Now, in this part of the video, I will give a brief overview of the history of timber use in construction. So timber was utilized to construct one of the first primitive structures. It was used tens of thousands of years ago, prior to the Stone Age. If you look at traditional timber structures, they have mostly been used as lightweight framework systems with linear solid wood elements that have limited span. For instance, in ancient Egypt, timber was scarce and was mostly used for entrance frames. In Rome, timber was used for roofing. In China, timber was used to construct temples. The timber was tied together using primitive rope made of animal hide. 
And then in the 20th century, steel and concrete were introduced to the market. And these were found to be easier and more economical to handle compared to timber. So timber use in construction dropped uh, in the 20th century. And then finally in the 1960s, they came up with this engineered wood product. And that's when sort of the use of timber picked up again. So the engineered wood products include uh, glued laminated timber, GLT, or commonly referred to in the industry as glue lam. And also you've got the LVL, which I'll be talking about later in the video. Then in the 1990s, you had your cross laminated timber that was introduced and CLT was a multi-layered uh, timber product that enabled the construction of uh, floor panels and walls that can sustain huge loads. In the next part of the video, we will be looking at some of the engineered wood products that are presently used in the construction industry and how they get manufactured. So let's start by looking at LVL. That's our first engineered wood product. And LVL stands for laminated veneer lumber. It is made from sliced thin veneer laid in parallel arrangements and bonded together under high pressure and heat. So the veneers are glued together and then they're pressed with the grain of all vene veneers oriented in the same direction. So that's an important feature of LVL, the fact that they have the veneer uh, lying all in the same directions for all the layers. What this does is it makes LVL stronger, straighter and more uniform than solid timber and overcomes some of the timber's natural limitations such as strength reducing knots. Once the veneers are glued together using a structural adhesive, the resulting strength is comparable to that of steel and concrete. Now, LVL can be man manufactured to almost any length and it's restricted only by transportation to site. It is often the cheapest engineered wood product and it can be manufactured to much narrower beam widths, which is needed in, for instance, retrofit projects. Some of the common uses of LVL include uh, beams, pitched rafters, purlins, and timber wall cladding. Our next engineered wood product is GLT. GLT stands for glued laminated timber, and it's also known as glue lamb. It is made by gluing together under heat and pressure laminates of timber. In terms of its production, once the timber is obtained from the trees in the form of boards, you need to dry the boards, uh, grade and classify them, and then you join them using finger joints. And then plane the laminates to bring them to a uniform level, apply an adhesive and press and cure them. And then finally plane them for the last time before they are ready to use. This production process enables large long length glue lamb members to be produced. And so common uses include beams, arc bridges, trusses, and columns. Our third engineered timber product that is common in the construction industry is CLT. CLT stands for cross laminated timber. In terms of its production, layers are glued together and it's often an odd number of layers, so talking about three, five, or even seven layers. Each layer is made of boards collectively known as lamellae, and these are placed adjacent to one another. Then the neighboring layers, so the layers that lie on top of and below uh, our designated layer, these are usually glued at a 90 degree angle, so they can't be of the same direction if you're, if you're uh, having a board on top of the uh, reference layer and then below it, they have to be at 90 degree angle to that reference layer. And so the point of doing that is because this allows for uh, walls and floors that are made from CLT to carry higher loads. In terms of the manufacturing process, the material first needs to be prepared by drying the lamellae. You classify them based on the strength and the grain direction and then you join them together uh, using finger joints. Next, the material will be glued together. 
as you can see in the last stages on the screen in front of you. In the next part of this video, we'll be having a closer look at some of the advantages of timber. So the first advantage of timber is that it is stronger than any other construction material relative to its weight. Its size and shape can be varied easily. Connections are easy to make, so for instance, uh, connecting your roof system to your timber wall can be made easy. Uh, you can produce various shapes from it, especially with the use of engineered timber products. Waste is minimal and it's very durable if it's properly treated. So you can resist termite, you can resist fire, and you can resist water. And it has a resale value, so unlike other construction materials. So how is timber used in the construction industry? Let's have a look at some common applications where timber is used. One of the most common applications of timber in construction is using it for formwork. And you can see that in the images in front of you. So timber can be used to construct formwork for walls, beams, and even columns. Another application of timber is uh, constructing timber frames. So these frames are small sawn timber sections commonly used for walls and roofs. A timber frame allows for simple connections to be achieved between say the wall and the roofing system, for instance, if they're both made from timber. With timber frames, construction takes place either on site or it can be prefabricated. In Australia, for up to three stories height, the timber frame needs to be designed in accordance with the Australian standards AS1684. Another application of timber in the construction industry is uh, using it for constructing trusses, as you can see in the image in front of you. This is particularly true for residential roof trusses that are commonly made uh, using timber. Again, another application is uh, using timber to create 3D trusses, and these are known as space frames. The reason that timber is very uh, useful to construct such structures is because it's very versatile. It can also be used to uh, build arc roofs, and it also you find some instances where you have buildings that have timber cladding. And of course, you have your usual doors and windows. Flooring is another application of timber. So a lot of residential uh, and commercial buildings would have timber flooring. And if you're looking at multi-story buildings, so high rises, you can use products such as uh, GLT and CLT, the engineered wood products that we talked about in order to carry heavy loads, and hence you can uh, use such timber to construct high-rise buildings. And uh, of course, you can use it for the purpose of building prefabricated uh, structures such as bridges uh, or even individual housing units. Now, in the next part of the video, I'll be talking about the sustainability of timber. So how do we assess the sustainability of various types uh, of trees? So trees absorb approximately 3.66 tons of carbon dioxide uh, for each ton of carbon that is stored in the tree. There are approximately 50% of the dry weight is composed of carbon that is removed from the atmosphere. And as such, using timber is actually a very sustainable means of enhancing the environmental profile of the construction industry. Now that doesn't mean that any timber can be used. It depends on what tree type it's uh, actually utilized for. Uh, but generally speaking, the production of timber is a process that involves the use of low energy if you compare it to say, for instance, concrete or steel. In terms of determining the sustainability of uh, the tree from which uh, timber is extracted, we look at three main aspects. So we look at whether the tree is renewable, and this depends on the replacement cycle. So for instance, you can have trees that have a 30-year plantation cycle. Some have between 60 to 80 years uh, in native forests. So the lower the value, 
the lower the time it takes to replace the tree, the more renewable is the tree. The other aspect that we look at is the reusability of the timber. So timber elements uh, and uh, that can be, say, for instance, recycled or re reused in other applications. If you have if you have that in, in, in certain projects, then it means that the you know your timber is recyclable and the source of that timber is also um, a, a reusable uh, source. The final aspect that we look at is the recyclability of your product. Um, and an example of that would be using waste timber from a construction site as, as wood chip. Uh, and you can use it for uh, a different application. Now in the final part of the video, I'll be talking about some of the common defects that you have to watch out for when you're using timber as a construction material. So a number of defects are present in timber structures. Uh, these are not necessarily always uh, present, so it's a possibility that you will be dealing with such defects. However, if your timber is treated correctly, then it wouldn't be a big issue. So some defects include termite, um, water, seepage. Uh, you can also have issues with the, tim the timber itself cracking under high loads. And it actually depends on the type of timber that you use. So for instance, if you use an engineered wood product, this issue is very less likely to occur because they can uh, sustain heavy loads. So I do hope that this video has helped explain uh, what timber is, some of the advantages and some of the products that are commonly used in the construction industry. Uh, please do check out my other videos where I talk about other construction materials.